AMD launch season is still in full swing, and today we're going to talk about the 7700 XT. If you guys are interested in the si se 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 no, no, so many numbers, <sighs> just run the ad. EK Quantum Surface radiators are available in many sizes and colors, offering the flexibility needed for any build. With three performance categories, including slim, performance, and extreme, the EK Quantum Surface radiators can keep even the most demanding components cool. And the multi-port options provide the modularity to make tube routing as clean and as simple as possible, regardless of your case. To see the full list of features, follow the sponsored link in the description below. So if you're interested in the 7800 XT review numbers, that was our previous video where we compared it to some cards that made more sense with that tier. Um, okay, so first and foremost, one of the takeaways from that video you guys might remember if you haven't, if you've seen it, if you haven't, it's a little bit disingenuous this season for the naming schemes to be the way they are. The reason why I say that is the fact that we have a different cutoff point on where the new die architecture starts and stops with this generation. So on 6000 series, 6950 XT, 6900 XT, 6800 XT were all Navi 21, which is the bigger die. And then Navi 22 was the 67 or the 6800 non-XT, the 6700 XT and, and moving downward. This time around, the 7900 XTX and the 7900 XT is Navi 31, which is the bigger, stronger die. And then Navi 32 starts with the 7800 XT, but this time around the 7700 XT is also Navi 32. So we do have a bit of an overlap sort of a thing going on here when it comes to the naming stuff, which is just leading to confusion when it comes to a, a random person going to the store and is gonna look at these boxes and go, oh, I should assume the 7800 XT is the same ver like tier lineup as the 6800 XT and therefore newer and faster. But that's not, the, that's not the simple, it's not as simple as that to have that takeaway. But now we're comparing the 7700 XT, the 6700 XT, Navi 22 net dir directly compared to Navi 32 is actually making sense because they are the same die. But realistically, the 7700 XT probably should be the card compared to a 6800, which is what AMD was telling us to compare the 7800 XT to. So it's just like confusion everywhere. You're probably gonna watch 10 different reviews of this card and find 10 different takeaways on the way that it was confusing. But the bottom line is the naming con convention is confusing. It just goes with the theme these days, I guess. Okay, so if we compare Navi 22 for the 6700 XT, and Navi 32 for the 7700 XT, you get more of everything in the 7700, which was the exact opposite of what we did with the 7800 XT. So 3456 on the 7700, and if I don't say the XT, just bear with me. They're all XTs that we're comparing for these two anyway. Versus 2560, and then we've got 216 TMUs on the 7700 versus 150 on the 6700. 96 ROPS versus 64. 12 gigabytes versus 12 gigabytes, both are 192-bit 192 uh, no, GDDR6. So core for core wise, now the 7700 XT is like a leg up and gonna be faster everywhere across the board. And you just look at these specs and know that's the way it's gonna be just based on the way the 7800 uh, versus the, the 7800 XT was behind on everything versus previous gen, now it's ahead. So if we talk, compare about launch pricing though, the launch price of the uh, 6700 XT was $479. Now, of course, things have changed since this card came out. You know, things are all over the place. Used cards exist, they're much cheaper. You can even buy them new for cheaper than this. But the launch price of the 7700 XT is $449. So this card already makes more sense economically, spec-wise, than the 7800 XT being compared to the 6800 XT or even the 6800. It's $30 less on MSRP and more of all the specs on a newer gen. That makes more sense, and I think if the 7800 XT had been the same story, that would have been a better story, because it was $150 cheaper. But you definitely are giving something up for that 150 bucks less, whereas this 30 bucks less is getting you more. So that rant out of the way. Let's go ahead and just jump right into the chart, shall we? Another thing worth mentioning too, if you look at the chart, you'll notice the 4060 Ti is an eight gigabyte version. Uh, the reason for that is we do not have any 4060 Ti 16 gigs. It's an AIC card only, no AICs have sent them, and I cannot get one in time for this review. However, if you were to look at um, some of the various articles, you'll see that the performance gains between the eight gig and the 16 gig in 1440 and 1080p is anywhere from one FPS, sometimes up to like three or four, depending on the title. 
Um, you can sh sort of just deduce what the performance differences would be. However, I want to point that out. The 16 gig model is what AMD compared it to. We don't have one of those. So you would have to kind of do some mathematical equations on your own to figure out what that improvement would be over the eight gig. Let's go ahead and talk about Port Royal. The 3080 is still on here because of the fact that the 3080 can be had used for as low as 400 bucks that I have found. So you, ha you can't argue with the fact that that card is a powerhouse at 400 bucks. There's just nothing can come close to touching it at that price. It's not like trying to say, oh look, AMD sucks by a used 3080. It's just you guys have asked me to include more used cards in some of these comparisons with new stuff. But there's people out there that just will not buy new and there's people out there that will not buy used. So take this data however you will. But we do have the uh, 3070 FE on here as well, which is definitely something to consider if you can get that used for like 299 bucks or 280 bucks used or whatever. The 7700 XT Quick, uh, as you can see, is definitely faster than the 6700 XT by like a lot. I mean, we're talking 8985 in Port Royal versus 6455. And again, more of everything faster RT cores, second gen RT cores, faster Navi 32 die versus Navi 22 die. It is going to be just a 6700 6700 XT stomp fest across the board. Don't even get me started in the 5700 XT. It has zeros on most of these tests because a lot of our tests use RT and that leaves the 5700 XT just unable to even compete because I can't load up an RT title without RT cores being present. Time Spy Extremes, our rasterization test. You can see the 7700 XT coming in at 7729. So it's a little theme right there. But this is the first test I actually saw it beat the 6800. That's kind of, I mean, again, the 6800 is the same guy, like architecture in terms of where it lines up on the 6000 series versus 7000 series. So it's a Navi 22 versus a Navi 32. So that makes sense. It's only a couple points ahead. The poor 6700 XT all the way down there at 5933. But hey, the 5700 XT is on the board. So that's nice, right? But if you're considering buying you, oh, and here's the other thing too, the 7700 XT Quick also just to the 3070, which in rasterization, which is kind of, kind of nice to see. I mean, 30 series Pascal was strong. I mean, it was strong, but it's kind of showing its age now as we move forward with newer, newer generation stuff. Okay. Perfect synthetics out of the way. Let's go ahead and move into some real titles here. Borderlands 3, which should also be named AMD GPU tester suite, because it is very, very AMD optimized. 7800 XT Red Devil, 6800 XT Red Devil at the top, but the 7700 XT, which is the quick 319, as you guys can see on here, is behind them by about 30 FPS, but still it's number three on the chart. And that's with the 3080 on there, as well as the 3070 on there and the 4060 Ti. I forgot to even mention the 4060 Ti is realistically the card that the, that the 6700 uh, XT was designed to compete with, but it's so far ahead of it so far, I forgot. Uh, which is a good thing. I mean, the, six, the 4060 Ti has already been deemed one of the most forgettable, unnecessary cards that has probably ever existed, taking place of every other 60 Ti model that's existed before it. It is so far ahead of it, I forgot it was even on the chart. Anyway, Borderlands though, very heavily AMD optimized, keep that in mind, but it's it's, a bit ahead of the 6800 non-XT as well. Uh, let's move on to Cyberpunk 2077 no RT. So 7800 XT and 6800 XT are probably going to always be near the top of this chart, by the way. Some titles, the 3080 might beat it, but those two are always going to be at the top. They cost more, it's expected. But the 3080 and the 7700 XT are not that far apart. I mean, in, in 1440p, 85 versus 81, that would be difficult for anyone to discern without a chart showing you the FPS or, or any sort of an FPS counter. Um, 130 versus 124 in 1080p, six FPS. I mean, although significant, again, very hard to tell six FPS apart, to be honest, especially when you're up, at, up above 120 FPS. 3070 all the way down at 103 and 67. So as you can see, the 3070, um, definitely not exactly something worth writing home about. But once you turn on RT, that is where things really start to show. So the 3080 just goes, just flies way out into the lead at 60. <laughs> so remember, we don't run DLSS or any of that sort of stuff. This so is Cyberpunk RT on is literally like a very, very difficult test without any sort of upscaling. So when 60 FPS is way out in the lead, what does that tell you about the RT performance, right? So the 7800 at 45, the 3070 at 46 and 1080. Anyway, 39 FPS for 1440. 28, 28, 
4060 Ti is beating the 6800 XT at 26 and 25, and then the 7700 coming in at 24. So the difference between the 7700 XT and the 7800 XT in 1440p is four FPS. But four FPS in this test is a significant increase because Cyberpunk is so difficult to run. That's why I like running Cyberpunk with ray tracing on for ray trace testing. Raw performance, no upscaling, just because of the fact that it is very difficult to run. Very, very difficult. Okay, so Forza Horizon 5, uh, it's a title I like to run because of the fact that you can get some pretty decent FPS numbers. Now this is the benchmarking track, um, where it's extremely consistent. No surprise, 7800 XT, 6800 XT, both those Red Devil cards are out in the lead, followed by the 6800 non-XT and then followed by the 7700 XT Quick. Um, yeah, so I mean, all four cards at the top are AMD cards in this price point. Then you have the 3080, then the 4060 Ti, then the 3070, and then way at the bottom is the 6700 XT. Now you'll notice the 5700 XT on here is on there as zeros. That's because I talked about this in my previous video. This title, for whatever reason, no matter what we do to the driver or the game install files or anything, refuses to launch. It'll launch the game, start to load the, the loading video that takes place, you know, with Horizon, the cars go boom, 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 boom. It goes boom, 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 desktop. Every time. It's extremely, extremely annoying. AMD has been helping us try to troubleshoot what's happening, uh, but unfortunately it's not working, but not a huge spread though in the FPS. I mean, for 1440p, we're talking 112 with the quick up to 119 with the 6800 and then 6800 XT you know, 137, but if we compare the 7700 XT to the 6700, we go from 95 to 112 in 1440p. So that's a pretty significant jump. Remember, we test our stuff at like the highest settings. So we're asking the card to do a lot. Gears of War 5, another one of those weird titles where 1080p sometimes gives us some odd numbers. Like for instance, the 7700 Quick is beating our 3080 in 1080p by two FPS, but losing in 1440p by like five FPS. So 1080 is odd. With the, as the cards get newer, 1080p becomes very, very strange where sometimes the card will beat in a higher resolution and lose in a lower resolution. I just, it, it's, we've run these tests multiples of times and retested and retested. That's why all these cards are on the table. Literally, all the cards are on the table, man. Because of the fact that sometimes there's just wonkiness with certain titles and certain cards. It's just the way it is and it sucks. But the 3080 was an anomaly in this one. I would have expected based on this chart that 3080 to be somewhere around 175 FPS to continue that linear charting. But as you can see, it didn't. And we tested it multiple times. But generationally, the 6700 XT is uh, significantly behind the 7700 XT at 36 FPS lower in 1080 and 91 FPS versus 118 FPS in 1440. Gardens of the Galaxy, no RT, same story we saw with the 7800 XT, 1080p is odd. I just I was just talking about that with Gears. Guardians is another one of those titles that the faster the card is at handling 1080p, the harder it starts to smack the engine cap, which then leads to weird throttling issues. But 1440p, you see everything sort of balance out and then separate the way they're supposed to because now you're 100% GPU bound. There's no CPU bound involved in that. As you can see, again, 7700 XT handedly beating the 6700 XT by a lot. So generationally, it's no surprise. It's doing exactly what it's supposed to do. More of everything and they're faster at those things that it has more of should include and be faster card. I mean, the story is exactly as expected. When you turn on RT, exact same thing. 99 FPS versus 78 in 1080, and 72 versus 55 in 1440p. But as you can see, Guardians of the Galaxy, the AMD um, 7700 and 6700 sort of struggled. Even with its newer gen architecture, it's down towards the bottom of the list. So Shadow of the Tomb Raider, an older title. I mean, it, all these cards are well over 100 FPS in their performance. Um, 7700 XT, nearly 200 FPS in 1080p. And that's with the highest settings, even called highest settings. And then uh, 135 FPS in 1440. So clearly a little powerhouse of a card when it comes to this particular title. But uh, compared to the 6700 XT, yeah. So 165 all up to 195. So 30 FPS improvement. We were talking a, a lot of performance jump here. And then from 113, up to 135 and 1440. Once you turn on RT, like I said earlier, Shadow is ironically a shadow ray trace. <laughs> it's just in the name, I guess that's all they thought they had to do. Um, very linear curve for all the cards. AMD still just way at the top. 7800 and 6800 XTs are at the top, followed by 3080. The 6800 though, um, 
is just basically identical to the performance of the 7700 XT Quick because of the, I mean, if you talk about margin of error, they both are at 135 for 1080p, 93 versus 92 for 1440p. And you can run these tests a hundred times and they would just trade blows back and forth am amongst uh, many different reasons as to why you get a one FPS fluctuation. That's why they call it margin of error. Uh, the 6700 XT though, Far enough back to be noticeable, I'm second to the bottom of the list, 75 FPS in 1440 versus 92, 110 in 1080 versus 135. So about a 20% difference right there, just in 1080p. And then last but not least, uh, Metro Exodus. So Metro Exodus uh, is the opposite of shadow, whereas instead of just shadow ray tracing, this is all lighting slash ambient occlusion, occlusion ray tracing. So there's no reflections, um, there's no shadows, it's just light bounce. So the 7700 uh, XT, 95 and 68 respectively for the resolutions versus the 6700 XT, 70 and 48. So just a huge jump generationally between those two cards. And then the 5700 XT obviously can't, can't compete because it doesn't have ray, ray trace acceler accelerators. My brain is fried with all these numbers, but um, let's talk about purchasability. The 7700 XT, makes more sense to have the name that it does and the price that it does than the 7800 XT. The 7700 XT kicks the 6700 XT's ass basically across the board because it has more of newer everything. Whereas the 7800 XT has less of newer stuff to make up the gap of having less of newer stuff compared to last gen stuff. So the 7700 XT does make sense. The problem is there's a bit of a performance gap between the 7700 XT and the 7800 XT. I feel like the gap is greater than the cost difference. So we're talking 449 MSRP versus 499 MSRP for the 7800. So I might, I might be the kind of person that would say I'd rather pay the $50 more to get more performance because that's not a lot of money in the grand scheme of the total system cost, but it is a pretty significant improvement in performance for 50 bucks. Whereas if you compare it to previous gens that did cost more, you're getting more for both of those cards for the amount of money that you're spending. But I, I just feel like the 7800 XT is, is the weird one. That, that's just the weird one. And the reason for that and the way it lands and why they had to do it that way is because you had more cards in the product stack last gen than this gen. So you have a bigger gap in spacing between the performances. So at the end of the day, if you're not the kind of person that's interested in going out and buying a 3080 used or the 3070, it probably wouldn't even consider it because the 3070 is being beaten by the 7700 XT, like at just about everything. So that's just too cut down of a die in the 30 series to even consider uh, versus, you know, the, the new stuff now from AMD. The Navi 32 core is pretty strong. You gotta decide now, is, is the $50 extra worth it for the 7800 XT or would you rather save 50 bucks and have that basically pay for one of your SSDs or something if you're on extreme budget? But if you're on extreme budget, you probably wouldn't be shopping for a $450 card anyway. Anyway, I'm glad to see AMD at least reducing the cost of the adoption cost of new gen versus previous gen. Whereas there's been this endless trend now of every time a new gen comes out, it just costs more. It gives you more performance, but it costs more. So the cost of performance scale just slides as a whole bracket up rather than truly giving you more FPS per dollar. It's like the same FPS per dollar, it's just more dollars for more FPS. It's nice to see now more FPS for less dollars at the end of the day. That's where you guys as consumers have to basically answer the question. Is it enough FPS per dollar for you to consider buying this card? Or are you just so fed up with the industry the way it is that you even if a great deal came along, you just over it. I think most of us are starting to feel that way. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Sound off down below. Only one GPU left that I can think of we haven't talked about being the RTX 4050. And I can't imagine that being all that exciting. So sound off down below. I think everything you would consider buying is out now. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Thank God it's over.